Welcome to Growth Track. Heartland Church, in partnership with North Central Indiana Bible College, is excited to offer this discipleship program that will include, encourage, educate, and inspire you to be the person God has created you to be. Growth Track is divided into tracks and modules that dive deep into faith, answer questions you have, and connect you with Jesus. Combined with recommended readings, opportunities to grow through service, and a community of believers on the same journey, your transformation is inevitable. If you would like to become a student and earn college credit for this class, go to heartland.church and click on the Growth Track page. There you can see the requirements, application, moral code, and other information about Growth Track. If you prefer to just view this class for your own information and growth, that's great, and we hope this helps you grow. Let's get started. Welcome back to Growth Track. My name is Misty Hyatt. This is Ministry of the Holy Spirit, Session 2. So let's open up in prayer. Lord, I just thank you that um, you are here with us tonight, God. I thank you that we are learning more about the person of the Holy Spirit and your presence and just that breath that you have for us. So I just thank you that um, we just open ourselves up to you tonight, that you are here with us, you wanna be with us, God. So we just thank you that um, you just lead and guide us through this, this message in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we talked a little bit about how wind was unseen. The next thing about wind that is also a parallel to the Holy Spirit is that wind is unpredictable. How many of you guys have seen that part of Mary Poppins where the winds come in from the east and all the nannies fly away and then Mary Poppins comes down? Um, winds change. Um, we were recently um, at an airport and they have these orange cones that, that will tell them in real time what the air, where the wind is blowing from because the air traffic controllers and the pilots need to know that because things can change very quickly. Um, so a lot of us though, don't like this part of the Holy Spirit that he's unpredictable. We want God, like I said, all tucked in a corner, nice and orderly. Um, we need to know, um, like we need to know that if we like God all tucked in and orderly, that God will mess us up. I always say I feel that God, I feel like I'm putting a puzzle together of my life and I'm getting ready to put the last piece in and then God does this to me. And I'm like, oh, I almost had it all figured out, Lord. But the Holy Spirit is unpredictable. He doesn't like to do things the same every time. And do you know why God doesn't do things the same every time? Because he knows in our little tiny minds that we will begin to worship the system and not him. I'm going to say that one more time because I have to get it myself. He does things differently because we will begin to worship the system the way he did that instead of him. And people have had experiences um, with God. And if you look around, especially in the American culture, most of the time when somebody has a major experience with God, they will start a different way of doing church. If you look at the churches in our town, most of them have been started because one person had an experience with God and they think that this is how everyone's going to experience God. And it's not that these churches are bad, this is just how humans are. That our church has upbeat worship. Why do we have upbeat worship? Because at some point we experience God with upbeat songs and so that's what we continue with. Why do some, um, you know, monks and people in the Catholic Church, why do they chant? Because at some point, someone had an experience with God when they were chanting. And we started to worship the system instead of the God who gave us that. So you see all over the place, we see the Lutheran churches. Martin Luther had an incredible, amazing encounter with God. He transformed, basically introduced the Protestant Reformation almost 500, over 500 years ago. And so we are following that experience that Martin Luther had. Um, the Methodist churches and the Wesleyan churches, they follow John and Charles Wesley. They had amazing experiences with God. They had revivals and they set up these churches and that's exactly how we still do them. It's not bad, that's just what we do as humans. But there are, now there are some things that we never ever change. We know that Jesus was always the son of God. We know that his word is always, but styles are the things that we need to let go of. 
if God to told us, hey, take all the guitars out and ring bells and my Holy Spirit will come in and everybody in Stark County will get saved. Guess what? We're pitching the guitars. Like that's what we're doing because we don't worship the method. We worship God. We don't worship the system. So we have statements of faith that declare that and that's a very solid foundation. But we also have this unpredictable nature of God that we embrace and we need to actually welcome it. Okay? If you don't, and to be honest with you, I don't necessarily like 100% of what our church does method-wise. But if it's reaching the people that it needs to reach, then I'm all for it. Um, John 3, 8, and Jesus answered, it says, the wind, and this is actually where they translated the word wind correctly. Jesus answered and said, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. It kind of sounds, sounds like that Cotton Eye Joe song. Where does it come from? Where does it go? Jesus said that first. Um, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is unpredictable. He has an unpredictable nature. God one time talked to a person using the burning bush. Moses didn't tell people, unless God speaks to you through a burning bush, you didn't experience God. He used a burning bush one time. One time, and this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible, this guy comes to Jesus and he brings his friend who's blind and he's so excited because he's going to have Jesus heal his friend. And he says, hey, Jesus, do the hand thing. Lay hands on him and he's going to be healed. And you know what Jesus did? He said, no, I'm not going to lay hands on him. I'm going to pick up dirt and make spit mud, spit in my hand and make spit mud and I'm going to rub it on his eyes. Now, could you imagine if you were the guy that brought your friend there? You would be like, oh my gosh. Uh, how am I going to, where you can't be friends anymore. Like where this is not going to happen. But Jesus healed him with his spit mud. Why did Jesus heal him with spit mud that time? Because the guy thought it was the hand thing. Because God, he's unpredictable. He doesn't want us to worship laying on of hands. He wants us to worship the healer, Jesus, God. We need the presence of God, even when it's in an unpredictable way even when it makes us feel uncomfortable, right? When you're like, oh, I'm out of the box here. When God asks you to pray for somebody at the gas station and you hear him and you're like, that's not very predictable, Lord. And the Holy Spirit's like, exactly. I'm not predictable, just like the wind. I have uh, um, another one is the wind is powerful. So just like wind, the Holy Spirit is powerful. It can generate electricity, right? We see all those um, windmills that are going, it can sail a ship. I mean, that's what they used for thousands of years to get across the, the oceans. And it can also destroy a city. You see, you know, hurricanes and tornadoes. And I remember one time I was sleeping downstairs and it's one of those um, nights that we were supposed to have like bad storms, but like I had my wisdom teeth and they were bothering me real bad. So I was sleeping downstairs and I hear the tornado siren go off. And have you ever been like half asleep and half awake and you're like, why is the tornado siren going off in the middle of the night? I wonder if they're doing a test. And then I start hearing like trees snapping <laughs> in our backyard. And I'm like, oh, the tornado siren's going off because there's a tornado outside. That was pretty unpredictable, but it's pretty powerful. And we get the kids downstairs and everybody was safe. But when we wake up the next morning, you see the power that wind does. Somebody didn't come down and chop these trees down. That wind blew these trees down. So the Holy Spirit is powerful like that. And I urge you to get close to the person of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to receive power. It says in Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And it's a shame, friends, that a lot of us shy away from that. Because many of us are going through things that human power can't fix. There's a lot of people in our lives that are struggling with depression and anxiety. And it doesn't matter. We can go to 100 counselors. We can go to read all the self-help books po possible. But the Holy Spirit's power can fix those things that humans can't. That's how powerful the Holy Spirit is. It's a shame that we would distance ourselves from the power of God just because it's been packaged in a weird way. We need the power of God. 
There's a great revivalist, his name was Charles Finney, and he was um, 19th century. Um, he started out as an attorney and he became a Presbyterian minister. And um, he was, he tells this, these are his own words, he said that he was very comfortable knowing God on an intellectual level. He understood God, he was very comfortable with that. Um, and his life was very, but his life was very lifeless. It was very predictable and it was really difficult to live that way. And I think a lot of us struggle with that, right? That we need life. We need something more than just getting up and going to work every day and coming home and cooking dinner and going to bed and then doing it all over again. We need something different. And so did Charles Finney. And he had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And th this is his quote, so I'm going to read it so I can make sure that I get it exactly right. He says, the Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression like a wave of electricity going through and through me. Indeed, it seemed to come in waves and waves of liquid love. I love that part. For I could not express it in any other way. It seemed like the very breath of God because it is the breath of God. It is his presence. And if you know anything about Charles Finney, he led thousands of people to Christ because he had that experience and then he shared that experience with others. So some of you are here today or maybe you're watching online and it is mission critical in your life, in your marriage, in your job, with your emotions, even in your health or even in your faith that you get some fresh air you get that wind, that breath of God, so that it can propel you into things that God has asked you for. The next thing is wind is refreshing. Nothing is better, right, than getting in a hot car and rolling the windows down. We went to Disney a few years ago, and Heath had to stay behind for a couple days to do a funeral, and we had rented a car, and my kids, they're so cute. We, they don't understand things when they're little. They just like cool things. So we rented a car and I'm like, okay, which car should we pick out? Because there was just a whole lot of cars at the airport and you could pick out whatever one. And they wanted this black one. And I'm like, hey, it's like 100 degrees out. And um, why don't we get the white one? Because it's gonna be hot in the black car. No, we couldn't talk about it, the black car, they wanted the black car. So we get in and it was just like sweltering, right? Like, but nothing's better than cranking those windows down and just getting all that heat or turn on the air conditioner and just like even the smell of air conditioning is just amazing, isn't it? Like there's just something about like, yes, that is what the Holy Spirit is to us. He is refreshing. He refreshes us. The Holy Spirit wants to refresh you. In 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10, it says, no eye has seen. So our eyes, if we saw it, we wouldn't be able to believe it. No ear has heard. Our ears, if we heard these things, we wouldn't believe them. No mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God reveals it to us by his spirit. We don't know the amazing plans that God has for us, and we probably couldn't even handle it. But the Holy Spirit leads us little by little, and that's how he leads and guides us. And that's why this class is so important, because I see so many people that just need to get some fresh air into their sails. Um, so many of us in this culture have been told to stay away from the Holy Spirit, um, even in our churches or by spiritual leaders that we trust, just because the Holy Spirit is so misunderstood. You don't want to become a Jesus freak, right? Like you've probably heard that. Maybe when you, you know, your family or your friends, when you're like, hey, I, you know, I, I decided to take the plunge and I'm going to follow Jesus. And, I, and people are like, okay, but do that, but don't go crazy. You know, you've probably all heard that, right? Well, it's time to just take a deep breath and time to get refreshed in that. Um, so Ephesians 4.30, and this is out of the message translation um, or the message version. It says, don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit is moving and breathing in you. And it's the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. So many of us try to make ourselves fit for Jesus, but the Holy Spirit will make us fit for Jesus if we let him. And the last part of that verse says, don't take such a gift for granted. So how do we not take this gift for granted? I have um, three, maybe four areas where 
we, um, what we can do, like what are our next steps, okay? We know the um, person of the Holy Spirit. I'm not too freaked out by him anymore. Like what do we do to get into relationship with him? The number one thing is you need to let go of your fears and mis, um, misconceptions about him. And like I said, a lot of us have these as it relates to the Holy Spirit. What do we do? Don't listen to people about the Holy Spirit. Don't go to work tomorrow and say, hey, I went to this Holy Spirit class. And they say, oh my gosh, I went to a church one time and just don't listen. Don't even trust me. Trust your Bible. If you're like, I don't know if the scripture really says that. Write that note down and go look at it. Because until you're convinced, don't take our word for it. We, wanna, we want the word of God to convince you. If you look at the Bible, you're going to realize that the Holy Spirit is not unbiblical. He's not outdated. It wasn't something that was just for the disciples in the, in the New Testament. He's not spooky or weird. Everything he has for you is good. And you'll want every bit of it. And that's what you'll see when you look at it with a blank page. Um, Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust God. I love this part. From the bottom of your heart. But don't necessarily try to figure everything out on your own. And I love that because sometimes God does not make sense. Right? He tells you to forgive people that have hurt you the most. That doesn't make sense in the natural. But we realize that it's so freeing. And on the other side of that forgiveness is such a beautiful healing. But it doesn't mean that it made any sense. Right? It doesn't make sense to spit in dirt and put mud on someone's eyes and that will heal them. That doesn't make sense. But it did make a miracle. It did work. And that's just what we have to realize, that sometimes God doesn't necessarily make sense. We can't explain it. I know that when Hagen was little, he wanted to go to Africa so bad and Heath was going on a mission trip. And um, it was like a very financially tough time for us. And so we sent out letters and we prayed and like he just knew he was going to Africa. He was probably what, he's fourth grade? Maybe not even that, fourth, third or fourth grade. And he just knew he was going to Africa. And I'm like, hey, we have enough money to send one person to Africa, not two. Like, I don't know how this is gonna happen. And literally like little by little, things would happen and I would balance the checkbook and I would be like, I don't know how we have extra money. Like, how was this possible? Because God doesn't make sense. He makes miracles. Like, I call that Jesus math. When you're like, yes, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cool. Same way with when he went to college. Like, there were weeks that we were like, how are we going to pay his schooling? It's Jesus math. He just figured it out for us. Like, God is so good like that. But he doesn't necessarily make sense. So that's why in Proverbs 3, 5, he says, trust God from the bottom of your heart and don't try to figure everything out on your own. Because you can, and I'm very good with numbers, and you can try to figure out how this money came in, and sometimes it just doesn't add up. But it was always in the black, and Hagen got to go to Africa, and I know that it changed him forever. The second thing that you can do to invite the Holy Spirit into your life is to just go all in. Just go all in. Now, remember the nest tea plunge back in the 80s when people would do the nest tea plunge in the pool? Do that. Do that, not just on this topic, but with everything, especially this being the first year of growth track, um, because you guys will never get the best of what God has for you when you go halfway. If you give God a little, you'll get a little. But when you do the nest tea plunge and you're just jumping in the pool of what God has for you, you are gonna be amazed how God transforms you and how God puts people in your lives that, and you're gonna be radically changed for the good. But the problem is you'll never know that until you actually do it. It's one of those things where you'll hear people say that and you won't experience it until you actually do it. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me. Notice that that's conditional. If we don't seek him, we're not gonna find him. Now God's love is unconditional. No matter what you do, no matter how you mess up, he is gonna love you. But unless we seek him and we seek more of him, we're not gonna find him. But it goes on to say, when you seek me with all your heart. So I encourage you to pick a season. It might be this school year and go all in with God and don't put God in a box. Don't be like, I don't think that's God because that's not what he's done in my life before. He's unpredictable. The Holy Spirit's unpredictable. Don't pray, uh, God, I'm going to let you have all my life, but you better behave and you better not mess up my plans. God won't answer that prayer. He'll be like, nope, 
Sorry. Your prayer needs to be, if you have it, I want it. No questions asked. I'm in. Bring it on. And the third way is to develop an intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a role in your life. The Trinity is such a beautiful thing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and each one of them have a role in your life. And there's a great verse that shows us each of the roles. 2 Corinthians 13, 14, and this is the message version again. It says, The amazing grace of the Master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This was kind of like a benediction, like an ending prayer over that. My fear is that many of us, even in our churches, will know God the Father, will know Jesus, but we don't have any understanding of the Holy Spirit. So the role of God the Father is to love us, like I said, and he loves us unconditionally. And I think if you were here in the service on Sunday, I talked a little bit about this at communion, that some of us need to settle the love of the Father in our hearts, that maybe you didn't have a great relationship with your dad, but the devil did that and he messed up your relationship with your dad so that you couldn't relate to your heavenly father properly. So some of us need to forgive. Some of us had great dads, but maybe they had a, an aspect of, um, that was just a little bit off. Or maybe our dads were taken from us too soon and there's just that hole in our heart. But we need to be healed from those experiences so we can understand that God loves us with an everlasting love. That it doesn't matter how much you mess up, no matter how many times you kick him in the face, he's always going to love you. He's always going to love you. You can always tell the value of something by what someone is willing to pay for it. Remember Antiques Roadshow? You'd be like, this is worth $6 million. Well, is it really worth $6 million if nobody will buy it for $6 million? Not really. But God values you so much that he bought you with his son. And I love you guys, and I pray for you guys all the time, but I'm not giving my son up so that I can have a relationship with you. That's how amazing God is. That's how much he values the relationship with you. And the God the Son, Jesus, he saves us. Tons of people understand that. We get that, right? Jesus saves us. That's why we sing about him, right? That's why we sing how awesome Jesus is. He steps in, he pays the bill that we were supposed to pay. All the shame and all the guilt he paid for with his very life. And for some of us, this is where the Trinity stops. We understand God the Father, we understand God the Son, but we really just don't understand what the role of the Holy Spirit is. And I'm going to explain to you through that scripture, God the Holy Spirit is with me. He is our intimate friend. He doesn't want to freak you out. He just wants to be your friend. Many of us really, really need this in this season. Many of us are, especially with the whole coronavirus thing, we have been isolated, we've been divided in our nation, in our world, in our families. I mean, there are people, friends, that they're on their phones all the time. They don't even talk to their spouses when they're home. Their kids are all in their rooms. The enemy loves to separate us, but the Holy Spirit wants to be with us, wants to be our friend. A lot of us are saved and we're going to heaven and we get that, but we're just like trudging through our lives to try to get to the end so that we can have the good part. God wants us to have a good life. He does. Some people will tell you that is not, not true. But I honestly believe through all the scriptures that I've read that God wants us to have a good life. It's not like we have to suffer until we get to heaven. Jesus suffered enough for us, friends. The Holy Spirit is here to make our lives great. A lot of us are like sailboats without any wind and we're working harder, right? We're paddling as hard as we can and we're worn out and we're exhausted. In the book... Chris Hodges talks about the word doldrums. And you guys, if you're older, young people probably don't even know what that word means. But if you're um, older, it's like a saying, oh, I'm just in the doldrums. It's like I'm in the pit, right? I'm, I'm stuck. And actually, the doldrums was actually a place on this earth. And it's, where, it's near the equator where the north trade winds and the south trade winds meet, and they cancel each other out, and there's absolutely no wind there. And back before boats were motorized, if your boat sailed into the doldrums, you were dead. 
you couldn't get out. If you relied on wind to power your boat, you were done. You were stuck. Some of you are here tonight, or you're watching online, and you're in the doldrums of your life. That you need that pneuma, you need that ruah, that breath of God in your family, in your Christianity, that your faith is like, I'm dead. I don't, I, I'm just waiting to die. Your marriage, your job even, and all you have to do is open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. So we're going to pray, and we will continue um, the teaching next week. Lord Jesus, I just pray right now that there are some of us here tonight, or maybe even watching online, that maybe you, they've even said in the last week, God, I don't know if I can make it one more week without something. And God, I know that your word is just a word today in due season, that the Holy Spirit just needs to be released upon us. The, we need to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives to get that breath, to get that fresh air, God. So I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that he is the presence of God on this earth. So I just pray that as we breathe in and we breathe out, God, that you are restoring life to us. You are giving us dreams and visions. You are, instead of that numbness that we feel, God, that you are just making things brighter. Because that's what you do. You revitalize us. I thank you, God, that it's mission critical for some of us tonight to just open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit. That we're going to spend time with you. We're going to put worship on and your Holy Spirit is going to come into Wherever we're at, in the car, in our bedroom, in our living room, God, we don't have to be in church to experience your presence. But through your Holy Spirit, your presence is there and it's breathing life into us. So I thank you for each and every student today. God, I thank you that you are breathing your breath, your vitality, your unpredictability, God, your power into each and every person. In Jesus' name, amen.